My next guest has lost all his marbles completely, actually. Ladies and gentlemen. He's, uh, he's one of the most unusual and inventive stand-up comedians around. He's really terrific. He appears at both the improvisation of the comedy store here in Hollywood, but most importantly, he is the voice, and some would say the actual soul, ladies and gentlemen, of Roger Rabbit, the star of the new movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is currently the number one movie in the country. Please welcome the voice of Roger Rabbit and here in person, Charles Fleischer. Congratulations on your Thanks, success. Thanks, Jay, today. and likewise to you. Why, this is a nice desk. Uh, this, this is a, and this is a nice pin with That's Roger a Rabbit gel. on That's a Wendy Gel. That's a Wendy Gel pin for Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I should wear a little Johnny Carson face on mine, actually. Well, <laughs> I left one in your dressing room. <laughs> yeah. I've got it on all the different stages, too. Now, wait, now let me ask you. Now, I saw you at the Improv, uh, uh, I guess uh, about six months ago. You said, oh, I got this thing. I'm doing this movie, Roger Rabbit. I'm wearing a costume all day. And yet the movie comes out, and you're, you're doing a voice. Why, why would you, were you wearing a costume? Well, I had to approach it not like a voice. I approached it like any acting part, and it was necessary to wear a costume for that reason. So wait, Bob wait. Hoskins, his reaction was the same year. His first day, I'd come on a set with a uh, rabbit. What are you doing? Yeah, you mind? You're off camera. What are you wearing a rabbit suit for? You're off camera. <laughs> but two weeks later, he thanked me, because what we had to do was create a new style of acting. He had to act with empty space where Roger would be drawn. Oh, I see. I stood off camera wearing Roger's suit, just like he did, and watching whenever Bob did. So if he lifted Roger's ears, I'd have to react to that. So we created a new acting style. A new acting style. Actually, actually, we have a clip from the movie, so we should tell people that would help. have no idea what we're talking about at this point. Well, they will. So let's, let, let's see. This let's is, run the clip. This is Roger this is, Rabbit. Uh, Roger's been handcuffed. See, I, I, I mean, I know you, and I, do you put a lot of your own, uh, your own inflection? I, I, I can see that some Well, of Roger's you... the closest to me of any character I've ever played. As a comic... <laughs> well, that's true, Oliver. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, that's certainly As true. As a comic and a tune are a lot, a lot alike. Yeah. And playing a tune was different because you had to be non-human and yet still have human emotions. And also, I had to come up with a speech impediment because all great cartoons have speech impediments. So I came up with that... And they, I never thought, do all great cartoons? I guess they do, don't they? They all do. So they actually film my face of, yeah. you know, talking like Roger, to believe, so they could see how to actually animate that out. And you had this costume on all day. Boy, I, I wore the costume all day. I was off, off camera. And that same, the scene that comes after that, I was in a, a back room, and Roger is getting thrown into that room. He gets thrown into a bucket. And I was off camera, right. and they had puppeteers to maneuver the various props around the, where the animation would later be drawn in. So I'm standing behind this guy, and he yanks the bucket back, and I was directly behind him, and he contacted me in a sensitive area of my body. So I screamed and hit the floor, and the crew was going, wow, this guy's really good. He's really into it. And I didn't get up. It's going, he's really out of saw this guy. I mean, it must be so strange to act and have that, I mean, obviously it all flows together so well, but not to have any idea what's gonna be, what's it gonna look? I mean, Well, we you... knew what would be drawn in. It was yeah. all planned out. So I would just have to watch Bob. We got to a point where he could uh, just improvise and we could work well, together. Yes. When they do a film like that, do they, do they shoot the film? I see, I, I don't know nothing about it. Do they, sh they shoot a scene, expose it, someone comes, draws it in, and you see in the dailies, which are the, what you shot that day? Or do you do, do you do the whole film, and then someone takes it and draws everything in later? Yeah, the voice comes first, then they animate to the voice. That's why oh, the voice comes, really? It's really the important voice comes, that the oh, performance had yeah. to be there, because that kind of is the blueprint yeah, yeah. for what the animators do. We were doing this in England at uh, L Street Studios, and that was where Superman 4 was being filmed. Yeah. And I was walking around on the lot with my rabbit suit on, <laughs> and uh, one of the guys... Well, see, that's one of the great well, things. On the set, the first day on the set, when I walked on my rabbit suit, everyone started laughing, because it's pretty silly. So right, I knew right. it was the right thing, plus it's good press. So I knew it was the right, right move. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, this guy from Superman 4, he sees me, and I hear over a uh, conversation later, he says, uh, I don't think this rabbit movie is going to be very good. I saw the guy, he doesn't look anything like a rabbit. Oh, that's very much. <laughs> he doesn't look anything like a rabbit. But that must have looked like a real studio. You know, see, one of my favorite things is when they show old movies in Hollywood and they show a studio, they have like a cowboy going this way, an Arab coming this way, you know, uh, people in dashiki. You know, right. it must look very funny. You have Superman walking this way and the rabbit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, rabbit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, this is a, a big budget picture. Right? How, how, what is this? Uh, I think it was eighty dollars or something. No, no, there's, but I know. It's, it's, it's I mean, it, it's, it's, a... it's it's well, all the money's on the screen. There's more artists involved in this right, right, project. Right. I mean, is it a big? Was it intimidating to you to work on such a big? Well, project? I knew that if I didn't get it right, it wouldn't be good. 
Well, uh, well, everybody knows that. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. It, it was but, very important, too, because uh, the quality of the voice, everything yeah. had to be there. Otherwise, it would be a lot of trouble. And I, I was worried at first that if I forgot the voice, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. Like that scene right there, if he had gone, when I'm down there on the ticket, I'm ready to do it, and goes, only when it's funny. Oh, that's not it. Only when it's funny. Oh, that's not it. Yeah. Only when it's funny. But I have to remember to do it a right voice. Only when it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I must be talking. You see, Jay, the thing about Roger is you have to make a voice that sounds like it's coming out of a three-foot rabbit. You know, I I'll bet your wife must have loved having you around the house while you're doing this movie. <laughs> no, I know. It's a great time, oh. and the kids enjoy it. Oh, My I kids now are, see, are going I know, around the house. I know what a terrific dad you are, and your kids are great. Do yeah, they, they're great. Do they really get a... They must think this is the most... Greatest thing in the world. It's a big thing. After the film, they go out and they're telling everybody in the hall, My dad is Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And my little dog's going, <laughs> And they have the little dolls with Roger talking, so I'm, I wake up and I hear myself going, How you doing, Dad? Did you start, I know, as a comedian, obviously, I see what you do, but did you start out doing voices? Was it? Mm, well, I used to do voices when I was a little kid yeah. because that's the key to doing different characters, the right, way they right. sound. If you don't have makeup and you can't change. When I used to take showers, I used to think that if there were aliens watching the Earth, maybe they'd be watching me. Now, if they are, I'm gonna give them a show. So I used to do a little shtick for the aliens. Now, if I'm wrong, big deal. But if I'm right, can you if imagine? If you're right, I'm... oh boy! If I'm right. yeah. What a if, payoff! If you're right, you can read about the National Enquirer. That's I it. Plus, you get Zaholian crystals. You get free trips to Zahunda. <laughs> I mean, the, the payoffs are unbelievable. You know, it's right. Whenever you have comedians on, people always talk about who their influences are, and. To most traditional stand-ups, of which you are not one, it's like Alan King or, or Jack Benny. I can't imagine who your influences oh, are. Oh, well, mean, let's see. Jonathan Winters, oh, yeah, Groucho yeah, Marx, Jimi Hendrix, Salvador Dali. Jimi Albert Hendrix. <laughs> Picasso, Picasso. MC Escher, Kandinsky. But they never worked together as a group. Well, that's what <laughs> people don't understand. They did one show. You know, it was on cable. <laughs> on cable. Well, that's that's probably. It was why called the Fleischer thought. Influence, and it was it was a short show, and uh, I taped it. I have it for you, <laughs> on all formats, by and, the way. And you invent musical instruments. You know, when I used to see you at the improv. That was my first act when I started. You used uh, to play like uh, uh, you used to play the uh, a hose. What was I had that the tatunaphone, the, the tatunaphone. I had different musical instruments. Well, that stemmed from a time in my career where I used to play buildings as musical instruments. Playing buildings as musical instruments. I now, think Jay said playing buildings as musical instruments. How a do you building? travel with an okay. act like this? Well, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to take your own instrument. Well, how do you play a... I don't understand what you're talking Okay, about. if you envision a building that's being built, unfinished, the conduit and pipes that run throughout the building are empty. So I could hook up my trumpet mouthpiece to the conduit and play the building like a giant trumpet. I played the Sears Tower in Chicago, the world's played tallest building. Played the Sears building. Tower. That's very prestigious. I tell you, the world's tallest building, Jay, the world's tallest building. <laughs> then I wanted to play the Century City Twin Towers out here. I wanted to do dueling buildings, oh. but they wouldn't buy it. No. And I tried to play the Alaska Pipeline. I wanted to play that, but they said no. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I offered to play a pipeline, and they refused me. Talk about the indignity that prevails on this world today. Why, I'm just kidding you, Jay. Roger Rabbit, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after this message. Congratulations.